Hi, welcome back to one of my favorite styles. This is the Style Sessions, and we're featuring the second part of Lambic Beers. I'm Roger Mitteg. I'm the founder of Prudhomme Beer Certification, and I want to explain a little bit more about why these are so special to me. Today, we're going to take a step back. We're going to find out where the term Lambic actually came from, and then we're going to look at a few different beer styles that stay within the Lambic category. So where did it come from, and where did this whole spontaneous brewing start? Well, spontaneous brewing probably goes back thousands of years. In fact, we can naturally assume that people didn't understand what yeast was or how it performed. So what they would do is they would make the wort and then they would let nature do its best. And that's what lambic brewing really is. So where does the word come from? Well, we can't quite agree on where the source or the origin of the word lambic actually comes from. There are three possibilities. The first is a French term called alambic, which means a still. The second is a Spanish word called lambicado, which means carefully prepared. And the third is a town near Brussels called Lambique. Now Lambique is special because during the 16th century, it had a lower tax rate causing a lot of brewers to settle there. So for me, the town Lambique is really the one that makes the most sense. So that's where Lambic beers basically came from. Today I'm going to feature a fruit Lambic beer and it's very special. I've never had this one before. It's really kind of cool. I had a taste of it a little while ago um, and it just blew my mind. But to take a good look at the other Lambic styles, we should take into consideration what they are. Now, a true Lambic is a beer that has been aged a long period of time, and it's typically served out of a pitcher, and it has very little carbonation to it, but it has more whiny characteristics and that nice little sourness that we got. The second one that we should consider is one called Beer de Mars. And Beer de Mars was very popular at the turn of the 19th century because it was much lower in alcohol. The third one is a beer called Faro, and Faro is a blend of Beer de Mars and Young Lambic. And on top of that, they add a little bit of priming sugar to it. So it's a bit sweeter. So that takes us to fruit lambics. And fruit lambics are what we in North America know more often than any of the other lambics. So different kinds of fruit lambics, they use a variety of different fruits. The dominant ones are cherries and raspberries. Cherries are Creek in Flemish and raspberries are framboise in French. And we know that Belgium is a blend of a multitude of different societies and languages, primarily Dutch, French, German. So the one that we're going to take a look at today is one from a very, very old Lambic family called Timmermans. Um, and I haven't seen this before in our marketplace, but Timmermans has a wonderful reputation of creating these great fruit Lambic beers. This one happens to be strawberry. The glass that I'm using today is called a Belge and it is a chalice or a snifter, if you will. And the reason I'm using this style of glass, it really depends on what you're trying to establish. If I want something that's really cold and refreshing, I might put it into a tall, narrow glass. But because I want to experience most of the fruit in this particular beer, I want a beer with a broader body to it so that the fruit can come out a little bit. So we pour, as always, on a 45 degree angle. Um, these beers are always highly carbonated, so you've got to be a little bit more cautious on your pouring techniques. But this is only a 330 ml bottle, so it should fit really nicely into this glass. And there we have it. I give to you the Timmermans Strawberry Lambic. You can see what a beautiful color it is. It's this deep, dark strawberry red. Um, it's very cloudy because it is re-fermented and the foam is not white. It's got this slight tinge of pink to it. Now when you see framboises or creeks, they typically have more of a rose colored pink foam to it. Now when you smell a fruit lambic, there are multiple things that you should take into account. First of all, you will smell the fruit. The fruit is always going to be a dominant part of the, of the, the aromatics in this particular beer. Now the interesting thing is, it isn't always the fresh fruit that you're going to smell. It's something else. And for me, when I'm smelling this, 
it makes me think of strawberry pie or a strawberry tart because it's combining both the pastry and the fruit itself. It's not like it's just fresh ripe strawberries. The other thing with Lambic beers is you'll always get that slight hint of mustiness. That little funk that we get from the Bretonomyces yeast. This one's wonderful. It's just got this really nice soft strawberry smell to it. It's really highly effervescent. Very spritzy in your mouth. Got a really quick finish very little aftertaste and whatever is left on the aftertaste is strawberry. Um, there's a bit of texture in your mouth so you get a little bit of mouthfeel but again these beers are meant to be consumed really cold. Um, they are thirst quenchers. You're going to get a little bit more of the strawberry in there. The mustiness is really only part of the aromatics. It doesn't have much of a flavor profile in these particular beers but they're wonderful beers to have with a variety of different foods. So first of all, great beer to have with salads because you can make a vinaigrette out of this. You don't even need vinegar. All you have to use is the beer. Secondly, you can spritz it on top of a salad just to give a little bit more added flavor. It's fantastic with desserts. Obviously with red fruit desserts, it's fantastic. It's fantastic with chocolate desserts because it presents a contrast between the chocolate and the fruit. And surprisingly, fruit lambic beers are amazing with spicy foods because it, the sweetness and the sourness douses some of the heat. So this is a great beer. Um, hopefully you'll love lambics like I do and you'll explore the world of lambics even more. Search them out, go and find them. Um, you'll fall in love with beers that don't actually taste like beer and they taste like something else but the good thing is they are beer so here's cheers